So in this section, we're going to talk about the product rule. Um, so obviously, the product rule applies when taking derivatives. And basically, what the product rule says is, well, you have two things that are being multiplied together. We want to take the derivative of that. It would be nice if it was simply the derivative of one multiplied by the derivative of the other. But as you can see by the formula over here, it doesn't quite work out that simple. So it says the correct formula is you'll take the derivative of f of x, multiply that by g of x, and don't do anything to that one. And then you put a plus in between, and now you leave f of x alone, you copy it down just like it was, and you multiply that by the derivative of g of x. So it says take the derivative of one, multiply it by the original version of the other, put a plus in between, and then just kind of flip-flop that procedure. Oops, I'm erasing my plus sign here. Get him back in there. So let's do that on a couple examples here. So for example, we have sine of x times cosine of x. And since there's a plus in between, you can see that you know, the order in which you take the derivative is not going to matter. So that's one good thing about the product rule. Just remember you take the derivative of one of them. So the derivative of sine of x is cosine x. And now we'll leave the original cosine of x alone. We'll put a plus in between. Now I'll leave the sine of x term alone. And I'll take the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine x. And that'll be your derivative. So I took the derivative of sine and got cosine. I left the original cosine alone. I put a plus in between. I left sine alone, and then I took the derivative of cosine. Same thing on our next example here. You could multiply this out first, and a rule in general is to do as much algebraic simplification as you can before taking the derivative. It'll just make the resulting derivative much easier. But again, in this case, we're, we're just trying to practice the quotient, or excuse me, the product rule, so we'll do it the long way. So I'm going to take the derivative of square root of x. And remember, square root of x is like having x to the 1 half. So the 1 half comes out front. I leave my x alone. I take 1 away. And if you subtract 1 from 1 half, you'll get negative 1 half. I'll leave the original x squared plus 1 term alone. And now, again, I'll just leave the original square root of x alone. And then I'll multiply that by the derivative of x squared plus 1. And the derivative of x squared is just 2x. And then the plus 1 becomes a 0 when we take the derivative of that. Our last example here, same idea. So if I take the derivative of 2x to the 3 halves, I'll multiply. So nothing happens to the 2. I'll multiply the 3 halves by the x, I'll take 1 away, that'll give me positive 1 half, plus the derivative of x is just 1. I'll leave my other factor alone, so pi x squared plus 5. And let me drop it down here so I don't run out of room. Now I'm going to leave the original 2x to the 3 halves alone, plus x. And again, pi is just a number, so when I take the derivative of x squared, the 2 will come out front. I'll get 2 times pi. I'll take 1 away from the power. That'll give me x to the first. And the derivative of positive 5 is just 0, so we can close off our parentheses, and we'll be done. Obviously, you could go back and simplify this one a little bit. Um, you can think about 2 as being 2 over 1, so certainly the 2s would cancel. And a lot of people, I think, may even just jump straight to 3x to the 1 half. Um, you know, when I first started doing these, I certainly always did it the long way, just to make sure I didn't do some silly cancellation that I shouldn't have. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So again, kind of a weird little formula with the product rule. But once you do quite a few of these, it'll certainly become second nature, and you'll get it. You'll certainly get it in your head sooner than later.